Hello VC. This is Dave in Texas here. Uh, this is the uh, first time I've ever made a, a video uh, to the Valor community, although I've been watching a long time. <coughs> and uh, watch a, a lot of them <coughs> all the time actually, and uh, but j have just never had any way of putting up a video. So, uh, but uh, you know, I, I like all of them and uh, and, and watch them a lot. So uh, anyway, when I was a kid growing up in uh, Texas, I'm from Texas, uh, we had a little uh, kitty record player in our back bedroom and uh, I started out listening to stuff like this that my parents would buy for us. This is the uh, official Mickey Mouse Club song. I believe it's a 78. And that's all we had back then was a 78, although my parents had a uh, 45, RCA 45 uh, mono <laughs> record player back in the living room. And uh, we'd go back there and listen to uh, uh, the radio and uh, probably just AM. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, started collecting 45s and it had like a spindle on it that was fairly long and you could stack the 45s on it and just continuously play them until they ran out and uh, but we didn't have any way to play long playing albums or 33 and a third albums started out listening to stuff like this this is one of my sisters uh, 45s Elvis Presley I think this is the first one that I bought when I was a kid it's by uh, Chuck Berry it's called Jaguar and Thunderbird and uh, it's like one of those race car songs back in the day, kind of novelty, not one of his bigger hits, but it's just about a Jaguar and a uh, Thunderbird racing each other. <laughs> and that appealed to me as a kid, as it would a lot of kids at that time. And here's another one by Elvis, Shake, Rattle and Roll. And then we also bought a lot of novelty records like this one by Jimmy Dean, Big Bad John. Of course Chubby Checker was a hit back then uh, with the twist and uh, I think this was his second hit Limbo Rock. It's a big deal. Of course when the Beatles invasion hit uh, I was right there with it and uh, I just happened to be home that night. Generally we went to church on on uh, Sunday nights. And I just happened to be home. We watched the Ed Sullivan show and of course like a lot of kids back then it made a big impact on me. Uh, everybody wanted to uh, you know grow their hair long like the Beatles and you know learn to play guitar and you know wear you know Beatles clothing like Nehru jackets and uh, you know that type thing. Uh, buy beetle boots. I didn't buy any beetle boots but I bought hip huggers <laughs> and I uh, wanted to grow my hair long like the beetles which my parents didn't exactly like. They didn't particularly care for that part of it but they indulged us on a, a lot of things. There's a yellow submarine. Uh, went over to England back in September and there's actually a yellow submarine over there in Liverpool I don't have a picture of it, although I do. I've, I've got a picture of it on my computer, and uh, it's pretty cool. They have a statue of the Beatles over there as well that you can get your picture taken with. And uh, of course, like like I said, with, when the Beatle, when the uh, British invasion hit, I was all there with them. I like you know the Rolling Stones and uh, the Animals and. Uh, uh, whatever I could get my hands on at the time. I didn't have a lot of spending money. Actually not until uh, you know the late 60s. I got a paper route back then and uh, had a little bit of free spending money but you know at least my parents would uh, uh, buy us a record or ask us what we might want you know for uh, Christmas or uh, our birthdays and uh, my first actual long playing record. They bought us. They bought me a uh, a uh, Sears Silvertone record player, which is a real neat record player, and put it back there in, in me and my brother's rooms. And it kind of looked like a suitcase, and the turntable would like fold down. Of course, it was always down for us, 
would fold down and the speakers would swing out and you could like detach the speakers and separate them even further if you wanted to but along with that Sears silver, silver tone record player they gave me this album which is the Beatles 65 album and it's still one of my favorite albums today I mean I, I love it and uh, started collecting Beatles albums along with uh, other albums that just interested me and I think this one which you <laughs> have probably seen before let me see if I can get it in this picture there it is I think if you've ever been in a, a flea market or a uh, you know Goodwill or something you've probably run across this album before I think it's uh, <clears throat> pretty plentiful but actually this album is like 50 plus years old I'm guessing and it still actually plays well it doesn't hardly skip I don't think it skips any actually and has good fidelity so uh, if you collect uh, vinyl today I mean they'll last if you'll take care of them a lot of people back then didn't take care of them but I always did I enjoyed my records and uh, here recently in the town I'm, I'm at, which is in East Texas, uh, they had a small record fair and um, the library also had a sale recently and I picked up some CDs. Uh, I may have to uh, show them next time. But as far as the record fair, or the, uh, you know, this little record fair out at a, a hotel over here, I got to pick up these. This is an early uh, get my bearings. This is by Robert Burns and Ron Dexter and it's an early New Age album. Um, I like these new early New Age albums because I collected them back in the day and uh, I'm not real sure what label this is on. Probably some self-produced or uh, uh, yeah I don't know. It might be self-produced. Oh, I can't, can't get my bearings. Uh, but this is volume one. There's three volumes of it and I picked up volume one and volume three and uh, they had volume two as well uh, but uh, I didn't get that one. It had something on the way it was written up on the back back here it didn't appeal to me and I thought well I'll get these these two and if I like these two I'll keep my eyes out for the second volume and I do like these two actually uh, they're a lot of fun uh, they're early kind of new age for lack of a better word for it but you know the uh, early electronics and uh, kind of acoustic guitar uh, playing uh, they're all really good I got uh, this one here Ralph Towner, Old Friends and New Friends. It's on ECM Records. And and I haven't really devoted a lot of time to listening to it. I have heard it. And it's really good. Any Ralph Towner album or really any uh, ECM album for, as far as that goes is worth having as far as I'm concerned. I tend to like his uh, Sargasso Sea album better and his, his uh, album he did with uh, John Abercrombie um, he also did those Gateway albums, Gateway 1 and 2, those are really wonderful albums I'd start with that but like I said Ralph Towner, any, any, any album by him or uh, on ECM actually if I could find them for a dollar or two which is what I bought that, that for like two dollars all these albums were a dollar or two, maybe three at the most. Uh, I would buy them for sure. Here's one by uh, Stanley Turrentine or Turrentine. I'm not sure. Uh, it's the baddest Turrentine, and I didn't have anything by by him. He's a uh, sax player, I believe, and uh, it's just got two songs on both sides. And this is uh, an anthology of previous release recordings. And it has a bunch of uh, good players on it. George Benson, Ron Carter, uh, Billy Cobham, uh, Eric Gale. 
and uh, I like this one quite a bit. I'll have to kind of keep my eyes open for more albums by him, but that's the first thing I've ever heard of by him. Here's another one on the CTI label. This is by uh, Walter Wanderley, and I was not familiar with him either. Like I said, it's on the CTI label or the AM label, and uh, there's the price right there for a dollar, or here, right here for a dollar. But uh, he kind of plays, um, he's not Brazilian, and I don't know where he's from, but uh, he kind of plays like Brazilian music, like uh, samba and, I don't know, bossa nova and stuff like that. But uh, upon first listening, I kind of thought this was a little bit cheesy, CTI label AM, uh, A&M. It was a little cheesy for me, and I didn't, I have to just give it more listens. I mean, it, it wasn't what I was expecting but um, it's it's okay pick this up for a dollar and uh, I'm not sure why I'm not a huge Nancy Sinatra fan although she was back on the radio in the day and for a dollar uh, it, it's it's okay to have I guess but uh, like I said I'm not a huge Nancy Sinatra fan and then I picked up this one by Tomita He's an Asian uh, <clears throat> synthesizer player, and uh, also, I mean, generally he on his other albums like Snowflakes Are Dancing or uh, some of his other albums, he just plays there by himself. He's joined with, on this album with the Plasmic Symphony Orchestra, and uh, I mean, I really like his earlier albums, and I was glad to get this for a buck. I mean, I'll I'll surely take it. But uh, it's got the Grand Canyon Suite on it, and something called Syncopated Clocks on RCA Red Seal. But uh, and then there was a guy at the um, <coughs> record sale. He had all these box sets that I was kind of curious about a little bit. I mean, the other ones were were like the uh, Reader's Digest box sets, and I weren't I wasn't so interested in that. But they had this one here, which is the Smithsonian collection of classic jazz, and it's got a, a bunch of different uh, musicians on it. Some I haven't heard, but it, it it goes back in time to like Scott Joplin, Jelly Roll Morton, and all that. There's like it's like a six six LP set. And uh, then it goes like up into the bebop era, and Duke Ellington, uh, Dizzy Gillespie, Charlie Parker, um, Bud Powell, and, and keeps going forward in time like Thelonious Monk, Sonny Rollins, Charlie Mingus, uh, Miles Davis, Ornette Coleman, and John Coltrane. By the way, there was a uh, John Coltrane special on PBS here the other night. It was uh, really pretty good. But um, I wasn't really interested in the other ones. It also came with a booklet. It's kind of cool. And it's got some pictures in it of uh, various musicians. There's one of Louis Armstrong. <coughs> and, uh, oh, I don't know. Here's one of Scott Joplin. But there's write-ups on them of, different, of the different musicians in it. This is John Coltrane. I get it. So I said, well, I'm not really interested in the other box sets, but how much do you want for this one? And he said, well, I'll take a buck for it. So I thought, well, you know, for a dollar, I'll take it. And all the records in it look in good shape, and they play well. So pretty good score. And I get to learn a few, learn a few things about some musicians I, I hadn't heard before. The only other thing I picked up here lately, back on Black Friday, <coughs> I got a tip from a guy on, on YouTube that this was on sale. It's the uh, Stranger Things uh, DVD uh, box set of Season 1. And I just finished Season 1 here the other day. And I, I've really enjoyed the series and the soundtrack to it is really great too. It uh, sounds like old analog synthesizer uh, stuff like Tangerine Dream and the uh, Berlin School and what have you. But the cool thing about the uh, DVD version is that it kind of looks like it's, it takes place back in the uh, in the uh, early 80s 
the series does and the box set or the uh, DVD case looks like an old uh, VHS tape and uh, it comes with a poster and whatnot. Friends Don't Lie that is uh, something that occurs in the series but uh, if you've not seen the series and you like that kind of thing like Stephen King or uh, kind of a science fiction mixed with horror or whatever you'd really like it and uh, if nothing else the uh, soundtrack to it is worth picking up anyway just thought I'd say hello and I've been enjoying everybody's um, videos on uh, YouTube and uh, I hope you might keep making them and I'll see if I can too thanks for watching bye